in at 10,000 pounds, basically dead on the nose, according to the factory weight tag on this one. A 32-foot uh, model number, anyway, Saber. I'm sure it comes in much closer to 35 total feet. Coming in on trade here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan. My name is Josh the RV Nerd, and welcome to my family's dealership. Now, it's a little bit rainy, so my camera work's going to be a little worse than normal because I'm also juggling an umbrella out here on top of everything else as a one-man band. And I've got a nice scratch on my forehead uh, because as I was saying goodbye to my dog this morning, he, for some reason, <laughs> freaked out, and I don't even know how, his back claw scratched me over the top of his back. I can't even figure out the dog yoga that got to that. But be that as it may, we're out here, we're trying to make it happen for you. And one of the reasons I'm stepping in front of the camera right now is to help set those good expectations. This RV's got some rough spots. I'm just gonna throw that right out there. And actually we're going to go through and I'm going to make a pass looking at those rougher points of consideration first before we go any further. Because if this is if they're going to be deal breaker factors, let's get it out of the way. Let's get that stuff addressed and know that obviously you can buy with confidence from Halid RV because we get these things out of the way. I don't try to sucker you in by glossing over stuff that you need and deserve to know about, you know, in, in exchange for your hard-earned money out here. And it's not what I'm going to call a handyman special. The RV's not dead. It doesn't need a bunch of work. It's okay how it is. It's perfectly campable how it is. It may not work for everybody. You may not like some of the things that you see, but you may prefer to do some updates, upgrades, changes, little fixes, little trimmings here and there. And I just want to set that good expectation for you. So enough of me talking. I want to get out of the rain. Let's get inside here. All right, so like I said, we're going to look at those interesting notes and points of consideration first and then we're going to make a pass through the rv after that and if at any point like i said you're looking along the way like eh, nope that's not for me totally get it totally respect it but give our team a call here obviously if we see something we'll say something so that you know it's going to be the right rv for you uh you know if one comes in give our team a call let them know what you're looking for maybe we can get you the inside track on something if this isn't the right one but again this one ain't all bad it ain't all bad. It's not tip-top shape and condition, but it's, there's nothing major structural going on here. And all the little glitchy things we're going to look at also saving you a bunch of money. So there's a couple different ways you could look at it, whatever works for you. And this is a little bit more of a classic layout. You don't really see this floor plan produced very much today. And it's funny because it does a lot of things people say they really like. Like it's got awesome travel accessibility. We'll talk more about that when we get to the kitchen. But I want to, again, I want to start pointing out little stuff here. Uh, it looks like there were some uh, personalizations done to some of the window treatments around the RV. I've noticed that several of these day-night shades are a little bit wonky. You know, they kind of probably need restrung. And if you're noticing, like it took me a second to kind of tune into it. I, that Well, first of all, that is not the original sofa. The sofa there is newer than the RV. I think these two recliners were originally in that other slide, and I think a sofa was originally over here. I think somebody took the sofa out, put the recliners over here, and then got a different sofa put in its place. And I say that because when you see the RV from the outside, you can if you trace this window right here, it goes like all the way down to the floor. So if it were me... What I would do is I would flip-flop the sofa and the recliners. That is a trifold height bed sleeper sofa, by the way. I don't know what camper that came out of. It, it never came out of a Sabre, but it's here. But uh, what, what else? Okay, over top here, this does have a power lift TV behind the fireplace. I think this tray, you see these little spikes? I think they're supposed to slot in these kind of posts. And I think this is supposed to come up with that. Right now, they're detached, and I didn't really want to monkey with it too awful hard. Again, it's not a major thing. It's just a funky little thing, but I wanted to point that out. Every little thing that I really can here, like even this, the the window treatment up here was removed. The shade, the day-night two-section shade, is obviously still there. Um, the, oh, what else was I going to point out here? Give me just a second. I'm so sorry. The kitchen. That is not the original microwave, but it's a microwave, so okay. The other thing I noticed, they took the oven out and they put in a toaster oven. A little unconventional, <laughs> but I actually don't hate it. And I personally think I'd get more use out of it because 
Hot Pockets in the toaster oven taste just as good as no normal oven, but they cook a lot quicker. <laughs> Over here by the door, the converter panel lid. Looks like the latch must have given up the ghost and they did a little bit of Velcro and trying to hold it shut. Again, none of this is stopping the RV from working. It's mostly just kind of visual things. Like it looks like right here, that door was rubbing on that door jam and it just kind of wore it down a little bit over time. The hinge might need a little bit of adjustment. Maybe you care, maybe you don't. It probably just depends on what you're looking to accomplish with this RV. Up here in the bathroom, they added that little shelf right there, which I actually uh, really like. Now, the folks spent some serious time in it. There's a couple of spots where they like hung some photos or some decorations, a couple little personalizations. Again, they added a couple little shelves, like the darker brown shelves right there. I actually like the color contrast and the accent they put in when they did that. They didn't do a bad job of it. It's just not factory standard, so I want to point that out. But one thing I really did want you to see up here in the bedroom is the extended bed slide up here. It also incorporates, the whole slide incorporates this little area. This drawer is not exactly drawing the way a drawer is supposed to drawer. And it's that kind of stuff that I've seen. That's really the majority, the, the vast majority of whatever I've found here. It's, it's like my car, you know, or your car. You're in your car, you use it every day. The armrest has a little bit of uh, something, or maybe the bumper's got a little bump on it from where you weren't watching, you backed up too close to a pole, or whatever. You get the idea. It's symptoms of being used significantly on a pretty much daily basis like this RV had. But uh, it's not leaking. The appliances do seem to be good working order. All the major symptom, uh, symptoms, systems and structures appear to be intact. Now, Maybe there's a little more TLC here than what you had in mind. Maybe you're, you're not in the idea of, you're like, you're like oh, I'd like to personalize and redecorate my own way. Maybe this doesn't work for you. No sweat. Totally get that. That's why I got this stuff out of the way. But this is also all saving you money. This will not, We're not selling this uh, for the book value. I've got a link in the video description where you can see if we have it in stock and what we're asking for it. And I leave the link in the video description for pricing because if we drop the price at any point, then you can always see the current price. Whereas if it was here in the video, you'd only see what it was right now. So if you're still with us, you're saying, okay, well then for the right money, I might be interested. What else you got? And the good news is this one has a lot of good still left in it. Jumping back here to the living room. Once again, one of the things I love on this one is just windows everywhere. And over here again in that big slide, they're somewhat masked by the hide bed, but big windows there. I think the previous owners didn't care that the windows were hidden because all the shades were drawn when I got in here. I think they just enjoyed their privacy, which frankly, at my house, <laughs> I leave my shades shut all the time, so I respect that. Uh, the uh, Again, that's a trifold sleeper, although it doesn't look like it was really used a whole heck of a lot. Got that rear entertainment over here. And that is a absolutely, admittedly, a little bit of what I call a neck wrecker entertainment center. Because you are turning your head a little bit, which is one of the reasons that uh, it came with a pair of swiveling recliners instead of just fixed sofas. And over here, this is such a smart thing that people don't really consider enough as a reasonable solution. But just that little TV tray. TV trays are a very undervalued, underappreciated tool that you can use uh, uh, when you're RVing here. Now, this RV does have two air conditioners. It has a factory uh, centralized main air conditioner that does uh, its position back here in the living room. It does duct through the entire RV. And there is a second air conditioner non-ducted installed up in the bedroom. So, I mean, this bedroom, you can probably get it like you're breathing icicles in here. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Let's get you a, uh, a look at some of the kitchen storage, shall we? We'll start up top and work our way up, down, jump around like Mambo number five. I kind of like these classic pass-through large overhead cabinets. You just, you don't see as much of that anymore, and it does give you more cabinet capacity and space. Uh, the, uh, extra shelf beside that, uh, microwave there, also a nice little touch. And I like the coat hooks right by the door. That's something a lot of RVs don't do very well. You might have noticed the master control panel is located above that. Now, down here, and I'm very thankful for it, there's so many RVs that don't give you a good wastebasket space. I'm glad to see this is not one of those. You can see you got that countertop extension there when you need it. Next to the new toaster oven. We've got ourselves drawers down to the floor with a nice little utensil organizer slotted in the top area there. Now, around the corner, a couple things I want to point out. This looks a lot like those 12-volt compressor-driven fridges that we see uh, today. It's basically the same size. It's, it's like just shy of 11 cubic feet. That is a 110 refrigerator. I just want folks to understand that. That is not a 12-volt or a gas electric. 
So this is something that'll work really good in a park. You're gonna want a, a generator to, to run that otherwise though. You see some good pantry space over here, but just behind it in the hallway, there's also some linen space. So just to give you a reference point here, if we're standing upstairs and I draw us backwards, this is what's beside that pantry. It's just at a funky angle where I couldn't really get to it. Now the bathroom has its own linen space. This is just kind of bonus overflow cupboard storage. And I'd be curious, you know, what would you use it for? Would you use it for kitchen stuff? Would you use it for bathroom stuff or personal stuff? The other thing I wanted to mention, I, I touched on this briefly earlier, is that if you look at this kitchen arrangement, this is actually a very good floor plan for traveling because if the slide out uh, was closed, um, basically, you know, where that kitchen ends right there, that's, you're not going to go past that, but you don't need to because we have all of our kitchen storage, our refrigerator, all that stuff is still going to be travel accessible. And obviously the bathroom right around the corner, you can make travel stops too as well. The bathroom here, we've got ourselves a large angled shower. I like the little, let me get you up here a little bit. The little shower caddy up there. Rockwood does a lot of that. It gives you a nice place to keep like your body washes and stuff. The big XL vent fan keeps the air flowing and keeps things a little bit uh, <coughs> fresher, if you know what I'm saying. Porcelain foot flush stool there in the corner. And that is a larger stone cast sink, which is something you don't see very much of nowadays. But basically the sink is rated for like up to 500 degrees. Now back up in the bedroom, we peeked at this briefly, but that is a 60 by 80 queen and that's a true queen mattress. That is not what I love to call the backbreaker wafer of death that most uh, <laughs> towable RVs come with it. This one certainly did. Again, that is a, uh, a second air conditioner installed up here. It is direct dumping into the bedroom, though. That does not feed into the ductwork. The ducting that you see is actually from the main centralized air conditioner that we saw in the living room. And the one thing I really like about this arrangement, remember those, those two bonus drawers behind us? I showed you the one was a little bit wonky. But you've got that big dresser storage there. And this actually has a neat little kind of hidden built-in laundry hamper. And that is something I wish more manufacturers would get back to doing. Give me a place to put yesterday's clothes now that it's today. We've got that front hanging closet. But again, we've got just, they, they didn't waste the space. They filled it out over here quite nicely. And something uh, I spotted, I want to point out right away as we come out here, because I think we really take it uh, for granted in today's market is this does not have auto leveling. Um, one of the different kind of price point cost saving measures that went into this product when it was brand new is it does have power front leveling jacks, but it has manual rear stabilizers. So you're gonna wanna have to kind of decide how important is that to you? It's also saving you some weight, saving you some cost. So it ain't all bad either. One thing I like though, man, there's a lot of uh, compartment space out here. And you notice uh, the little PVC hanger set up. If I'm reading that right, I do believe that is a home-brewed uh, fishing pole holder, which is actually something I wish more RV manufacturers would do, is offer some sort of like outdoorsby kind of package where they give you a spot where you could do things like, you know, set fishing pole hooks and things like that. Now, the underbelly of this is enclosed and insulated. It's not what I think most people would uh, consider to be four seasons. There's a little bit of sun kissing on some of the decals. Uh, overall though, the skin still has a decent amount of gleam from the gel coat on it. It doesn't look terrible. It looks like something if you hit it with a decent kind of cleaning conditioning, it looked pretty good overall. Would it look brand new? No, certainly not. Would it look, you know, reasonable for the model year? I think so, but that's my opinion and it's your money. So you need to form your own opinion. Again, what I'm doing here is just trying to make sure you're aware of exactly what you're getting. It looks like maybe some uh, bushes might have got a hold of just kind of touched and kissed and marked their lines down that uh, fender trim right there. It looks like there's a little crease on that fender trim right there here uh, on the slide. Again, that is just decorative skirting on the slide. It's not structural. I wish it wasn't there, but again, I'm not going to lie to you about it. Now, I am wearing the wrong shoes for getting up on a wet RV roof today. They're kind of slick bottom sort of deck shoes. So as a result, I'm not going to be able to get you up there today just for safety reasons. That being said though, I, I, I expect you're going to have questions about this RV, uh, you know, and, and some extra information you'd like to learn. If there are additional specific pieces of information, like, hey, can you get me a couple pictures of the roof? Absolutely. You just call our sales team when the weather's better. We'll get up there. We'll get you pictures. We'll get you a 30 second video of the roof. Uh, you know, whatever you need to feel confident. That's the whole reason I'm doing this all together here so that you know what questions you need to ask. We'll do all that stuff for you, no big deal. I don't expect you to take our word for it. There's too much money on the line here. Um, 
This looks like it used to have one of those fold-down cargo travel racks. It looks like it was removed. It doesn't look like it was damaged. Evidently, the previous owners just didn't use it. And again, I love those door side panoramic windows. If it were me, just like I said on the inside, I would flip flop the sofa and the recliners so that I got a better view of my campsite over there instead of the recliners blocking or the, the sofa blocking half the windows. So once again, thank you very much for joining our family owned place today. Uh, if this isn't the right RV for you, but you appreciate the way that we pointed those things out, hit the like button just to let me know I'm doing a good job. And hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, so that you could always keep in tune with the, uh, the new arrivals as they're coming in, whether it is new or used. And short of that, if this is the right one, give us a call. We'll get you hitched up. We'll get you finance. <laughs> we'll get hitched. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think my wife would appreciate that very much coming from me. But uh, no, we'll, we'll get you camping, folks. All we need is just the opportunity to work with you. And again, if this ain't the right one, we've got plenty of other things that could work. So when you're ready, we're ready. We'll shoot you straight. Take care. Stay safe. Have fun and happy Halo camping, everyone.